Hello everyone. This is Vijit from AJSkill Development. Today we are here to witness the final project demo of POC4 presented by Milestone Makers team. POC4 builds upon our previous success, guided by Ashok's vision and leadership. For the past two months, our skilled team has diligently worked on specific user stories with each intern contributing to at least three user stories. Together, these user stories have evolved into a wonderful project and the team will now showcase key implementations. I wish the team all the best. Over to you, team. Thank you, Vijay. Greetings, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Chetna Sinha, and I'm excited to present our proof of concept for MM Seal Dealer Management Project. This presentation mark a significant step towards realizing our vision and exploring the potential impact on our solution. Before we dive in into the details, let me quickly walk you through the agenda for today. We will begin with an overview of the problem statement followed by objectives of our POC. Next, we will showcase the solution architecture and the key features we have developed. We will then present the result and finding. And finally, we will discuss the next steps and open the floor for questions to audience. Now, before we start and do everything and explain the solution, let's meet our team who has made this possible. Next slide, please. So this is our team. And I extend my special thanks to Mr. Ashok Raj and Vujit for their valuable input and support during the process. Without that, we could not have made so far. I'll request Shiva Kumara to explain the role and responsibility Thank you, Suna. Good evening, everybody. My name is Shok. I am the part of the team. And roles and of product owner is Mr. Ashok Raj and project coordinator Vijit. And Scrum Master is myself and Sugil. And operation manager role also done by me only. And developer team consists of Shivakumar, Aradhana, Boneshwari, Sarita, Simha, Reshmita, Sugil, Deepika, Kavita. And the deployment consists of Aradhana, Bhuneshwari, Sinha, Reshmita, Shivakumar, and QA by Shivakumar, Aradhana, and Bhuneshwari. Over to Sinha, please. Thank you. Thank you, Shivakumar. Next slide, please. Okay, so now we are going to look how we started and how the you know we uh, conquer all the challenges and develop the solution. So our journey began with the identifying a critical challenge that has been effective MMC. The, problem uh, the problems we were addressing in the business department in B brief. So uh, the MMC is a company, mid-level company, which is providing sealing solution for various industrial application. And they were looking for uh, a precise error-free process with the current workflows, they wanted to do more work with the same efficiency. They do not want it to you know, compromise on the efficiency. That's why they needed automation. There was no platform for customer or dealer to communicate. So they, they were looking for a platform where customer and dealer can communicate and uh, know about the company. Ensuring a seamless journey from dealer onboarding and issue resolution to deliver an exception customer experience. That was also there something they were missing. They were looking to maintain comprehensive record for all active products, contact and order, provide tailored and efficient service accordingly. So we can see that here they were looking for on, on a bigger scale automation and error-free process as being as focused and going for the more work with the same efficiency. So looking on those requirements, we uh, started our uh, problem uh, statement mapping in the solution. And during mapping that solution, we use some tools. Next slide, please. 
Okay. So the primary objective of the POC is to demonstrate the feasibility and effectiveness of our proposed solution. Especially, we aim to automate, validate the concept, test key functionalities, assess for performance, and gather feedback. To achieve this, we have used tools as Agile tool, Trello, Jira, and Azure DevOps. For code management and development, we have used DevOps Center, Gearset, and Capado. And for the team communication, we have used mailboxes, Zoho, and ShareDrive. We have developed the solution, next time. We have developed the solution using Salesforce Development Edition and Scratch Art. Now let's talk about the solution architect. To tackle this problem, we have assigned a solution that leverages agile methodologies and the Salesforce platform. Our solution architecture comprises the components such as site management, dealer onboarding management, code management, service management, case, and survey. This architecture ensures scalability, security, and user friendliness. Next slide, please. Now, let's move on the key feature of our POC. We have developed and implemented this functionality. Each feature has been carefully designed to address a specific aspect of the problem and provide tangible benefits. Let's explore the site management. This has been developed and designed by Bhuvaneshwari and team. Over to you, Bhuvaneshwari. Thank you, Chetna. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Milestone Markers for giving me this opportunity and Ashok for providing me this opportunity to work on this project. So now I will share my screen. Hope my screen is visible to everyone. Yeah, so this is the page that we have uh, developed for a site that is a site page which we have developed for MM seals. Here in the home page, we are uh, just displaying the products to give an information so that uh, the users, this is the this site is for guest users. So here we are displaying the products to provide the users with a quick access to our most popular products so that uh, they can go ahead and uh, know what are the products the company is offering here. So it'll, this uh, why we have used this is it will increase the sales, it will increase the visibility and it will improve the overall customer satisfaction also. So if uh, some company wants to buy, if, if uh, the guest user doesn't know any information about mechanical seals, they can just go and click on this and uh, they will be, uh, uh, they will go to a page where it explains what is mechanical seals like the uh, and uh, all the details will be provided here. And also here we have provided, uh, we have uh, used this related articles page so that uh, we can know which, uh, which is, uh, what are all the products that the users are mostly checking on. So it will give us an information about the sales. So and then we also have some links provided quick links provided here the about us will take you take us to the uh, about us page products and contact us page now i will explain it one by one and the next page is your dealer application page this is the page which is developed for uh, uh, the new dealer this will be explained shortly by my colleague and then we have the products play page where we are uh, displaying the products these are the products that uh, we are currently manufacturing, the MM seals is manufacturing in their uh, uh, company. And then they have, a, we have introduced, added this product inquiry form where they can inquire about the products. It will also be explained at a later stage. And uh, here also we have provided mainly the MM seals company is uh, mostly focusing on mechanical seals and O-rings. So these are all the products they are offering currently, they are manufacturing currently. And uh, they, uh, this page will give you more information about uh, the mechanical seals. And likewise, O-rings, if you click the O-rings also, it will take us to the O-rings page. 
And next comes the about us page where we have explained about the MM Seals company. They are the MM Seals company is a company which is based in Chennai, and uh, they are mostly supplying oil seals and gaskets for Ireland, even for abroad also. So we have given some information about uh, their company here in the about us page, and uh, in and in contact us page. We have uh, provided the contact information about how they can contact any guest user can contact this. And here we have provided the contact support form where you, if we, if any guest user needs some information about some seals or gaskets or uh, about our product, MM seals products, they can just uh, submit here. That it will be submitted as a case. So uh, let me give some information that uh, I want some information about uh, machine seals. seals and here I'm providing my mail ID. This will create a case in the back end and uh, the case team will look into it and uh, they will be uh, uh, look, uh, get into it and uh, someone will reply to us back shortly. This is for a uh, guest user and also we have uh, a com customer community user also. There they can uh, register themselves as a customer community user. So in this here, uh, they can log in as a new user also. If they are not a member, they can just provide uh, the information. If they want to be a part of our community, they can provide their email. And uh, like how Salesforce, we get a uh, link to, uh, to set our account. Like that, we will be receiving an email to set our password everything so in that case we, they will get they can be, uh, become a part of our community that's all from my side over to you chetna thank you bhuvneshwari now i will request suhail to explain ssr login for our site okay So, 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 hi guys, uh, thank each and everyone who has given this wonderful uh, opportunity to be a part of this project. So, we are going to discuss about SSO login. What is an SSO login? It is a single sign on uh, feature which is provided in the Salesforce, which uh, helps like reduces the number of times the user to uh, give the credentials with. Uh, navigating between the applications or uh, going to access any type of the application. So here uh, there is a uh, prerequisite for this to be uh, achieved. So the user who is going to be logged in uh, into the Salesforce using SSO should be uh, uh, he should be configured within the org. Uh, like he should be the user should be created with the uh, email uh, uh, which he is going to use for the SSO thing. Uh, so I can uh, start this. Uh, Thank you. Let me share my screen. So yeah, uh, so as you can see, uh, I have mentioned that uh, there is a prerequisite. So uh, the user should be uh, configured within the Salesforce, uh, created and assigned with some roles and responsibilities. Uh, by giving the email which he is going to use uh, to get uh, logged into the Salesforce. So once the user is created, uh, then when the user is going to log in into the Salesforce, the login page looks similar kind of thing. So here he will be able to find this login with Google. So once the user clicks on login with Google, uh, he will be redirected to the Google account page where he needs to select an Gmail account, which is configured within the Salesforce. So it is uh, this one, the, the thing which I have shown you is this MN Makers POC. So once the user clicks on uh, the respective email, he will be automatically redirected to the uh, Salesforce uh, application, uh, provided uh, he would be able to see the pages to which. Uh, the profile he has been assigned. The similar kind goes with the other applications also. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Now we are moving to the next module, which is a dealer onboarding module. Thank you. This module starts with filling the dealer form that we have seen on site and ends at as becoming a dealer on successful completion of the process. Let's see the dealer onboarding form and email verification process with the file upload uh, by Shiva Kumar. Shiva Kumar, over to you. Right. Thank you, Sunna. I was assigned with a user story to create a dealer onboarding portal for lead creation. This is my flow. Actually, this flow consists of this flow that consists of two. One, one is for a new dealer and one is for existing dealer. New dealer, we require a basic information, address, data, company details, comment requirement, and confirmation from the user whether the enter details are correct. Once it is enter details are correct, the system will send a email with the OTP generated for email verification. Once the dealer receives the email verification, again he has to go to the existing dealer, put the dealer reference number. And data is it will check the data if it is available. It will ask for the OTP verification. That OTP number has to be submitted in the box provided. Once it is confirmed, email verif verification is the email is verified, message will come, then you can upload the document. And we'll show the demo in this in, in the in our org. This is our R. I'm going to dealer application. As I told earlier, it is having two choices for new dealer and for the existing dealer. I'm selecting a new dealer and click next. It is having one, two, three, four requirements, basic requirement, basic information, address details, company information and government requirement. Why I have divided into four? Because all fields having some validation. This, this, this particular company name, we have fixed as four characters minimum and 40 characters maximum. And Amberson symbol and space only allowed. Other symbols, numbers and all not allowed as per the requirement. So I am typing the name as Once you type that there is a reactive screen in the next page, whatever the type it will convert into uppercase, it will display here so that user can see what they have typed, whether it is in the correct format or not for one more checking. And mobile number, again, it is this dealer is for India only. Mobile number as per the, our Indian government, the mobile number should start from six. So zero to five is not allowed. That validation also we have I have updated. I'll try. And it will give it will it will, it will show allowed pattern only allowed. So you have to give the correct mobile number. Then email ID, the standard format. Then you have to select next to go to the next one. This is the address details. Once the address detail is there, it will ask for whether that you want to know your location. This is because of the new and summer the flow, summer 24 release, we can set the address in the Google map. So it will update the rest of the details. So this is my address in Suchi. Uh, just I updated it, rest and it will update automatically. Suppose you are in US, suppose you want to suppose Boston, it will give the Boston detail like that. You can have all the details. I am staying in Karmandabam. Mandabam Trichy, it will show the Trichy details. I select next, it will ask for the company information. Company information again, minimum that. That dealer company should have minimum 50 
employees. So I have selected 60 year of incorporation, minimum three years, they should be as a dealer. And annual revenue, minimum three to four lakhs, depends that we have to specify. Then select next. Then this is the government requirement. Aadhaar card is a mandatory. Again, Aadhaar card, it is a 12 digit number. It should not start with a zero and one. That was the government requirement. Then pan card, it is a 10 digit number, first to four character, first to five characters will be alphabets, next to four characters will be numeric, and last one is alphabet. And GSC number also start with first to two letters will be the state belongs to again that pan card pan card should match. Then there is a one numeric will be a check digit and a zero for future use and one more letter. See, this is the check order number because this zero is not allowed, zero one is not allowed. So you have to type the other number in a proper way. I'm putting my other number. And create dealer record. When this, this, this record is to be presented here, then it is having the two options, whether that confirmed details, entered details are correct or check. And if you want to edit also, you can edit the details also. Again, the edit details, they are having various options. You want to have a problem with the basic information, you can select basic information. You want to do the company information, you can select company information. You can select other details also, it will go to the address. Government requirement or government requirement. So uh, there was a problem in the address, I'm selecting address details. It will go to the particular screen only. So it will go to the particular screen, I'm selecting Karumandabam. And address is my address. And you can put the postal code. Then click next. Again, it will come to the confirmation screen. You can change. You can see this address was changed to a near address. Please decrease for correct. Yes, it is confirmed. Select next. Dealer record will be created successfully. And dealer reference number is this number. And communication mail forwarded to email. Address. See, we will receive events. The dealer is confirmed, you will get an immediately confirmation mail in your mail ID. Are you able to see my screen? Screen is visible? Yes, sure. you can continue. Yes, yeah, thank you. So this mail ID, you will receive that regarding the dealer name or name of the contact person, dealer reference number. This is the verification code. It is a, it, this verification code is generated through the Apex with a random number, max random number. This is the email they will receive. So kindly make a note of the dealer reference number and verification, OTP verification. Again, go to the dealer. Select the existing dealer, put the dealer reference number. This one is the new feature in summer 24 release. It is the action button. The action button usefulness, you can see everything in the one screen only. No need to go for a next screen like the earlier one. So once the dealer display, it will display detail contact person, what is the dealer name, what is the email ID, and you have to type the OTP number. When the OTP number is matched, it will give OTP is verified and it can upload the files.
everything in one screen i am not shifting to other screen everything come in one screen only because of the useful not of the action button once the action button is selected you have to write the actual launch for to do that process upload file where do you get the otp number in mail id mail id so we mail i could we couldn't see that okay. yeah. one minute i'm sorry sorry i'm sorry that's why whether my screen is So have the entire screen done. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, now I can see the screen. Right. This is the mail ID. No reply. This is the mail ID. This is dealer number fifty-six. This is the current one. Dealer name, contact person name, dealer reference number, and the verification. So I'm selecting the file. Select open. And then it will get file is uploaded. And select next and thank you. This is this all from my side. And over to Sina. I'll just stop sharing. Thank you, Shio Kumar. So one what's the D? One, mm -hmm. one minute. Yeah. Let's move to next slide. Okay, so once a dealer has filled the form, it is create, going to create a lead in our system. And how lead is moving from, you know, uh, being acceptable and getting created in account, that is going to be covered and under lead nurturing process. And then we will see how the appointment scheduling is helping a lead to, to be converted. So first we will see lead nurturing process. Over to you, Bhuvana, for that. Thank you, Chetna. Yeah. So uh, this is my uh, this is the lead which is created now. Once the lead is created with status as open con not contacted, it will be automatically assigned to the evaluation team. The evaluation team can go ahead and they can work on the cases. Now, uh, when we open this lead we can see that the, the attachment that is the file that was uploaded by Shiva Kumar has been, will be found in notes and attachments page. So then now here the lead is assigned to the, the dealer evaluation team. Here either the dealer evaluation team member can either come automatically and they can fetch the records and they can work on the lead records. For this, we have implemented an omni-channel routing. So here, what we are uh, doing is the evaluation team, the leads in the evaluation team will be there. So here, I'm going to omni-channel routing, omni-channel, and when, whenever I change the status to available lead, now I will get better lead message. I can either accept this lead or I can decline this lead. Right now, I'm accepting this lead so that I can process, that is the dealer evaluation team member can go ahead and uh, process this lead. That is from the, that's all from my side. Over to you, Suhail. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Let me share my screen. So, so this is the current lead which is uh, created. In, so, uh, so once the lead is created, uh, let us assume that the lead wants to get in contact with the company and get more info about the products they are providing and the service requirements. So, and, and in that case, uh, the lead will be giving some description as uh, he needs to get connected to a representative or someone from the company to get more info. So, in such case, the uh, representative who is going to work on this lead will check the description. If there is a ask for uh, scheduling a meeting or call, uh, connecting with the lead or contacting them uh, so that uh, they can get some info. Uh, then the uh, representative who is going to work on this will be finding the scheduled meeting component. Actually, uh, we have developed this using our screen flow. So here, uh, the representative will be giving his uh, feasible time. Let us assume that he is going to schedule a call. Uh, he's free from tomorrow. And so we'll check it. 
four o'clock. So let us assume that it's still four thirty. So once he uh, gives the timings, the start time and end time of the meeting, uh, he needs to click on next button. So here he will be able to see the email uh, of the lead actually, which is already uh, given uh, when he is filling a form. So the representative will recheck if there is any mismatch or if uh, there is any incorrect, uh, corrections needed. So he will check it and he will be proceeding for the next. Once uh, he clicks on next, automatically we will be able to see a event getting uh, created under the same lead, saying that meeting with uh, the lead name. Actually, the Shiva Kumar is, is known as meet. Uh, is it is a lead name. So here it will be uh, the event will be created, and a email will be sent to the respective email. Shiva Kumar, can you show me the? Uh, can you share your screen and show the email which you have written? Yeah, so here uh, uh, the lead will be getting this kind of uh, mail. Uh, so he would be able to give his uh, available time or if he is okay with this uh, timings, he will be replying uh, respectively. And the mail address which you are seeing here as he has sent me, it, it would be the email address of the representative who is working with the uh, respective lead. Yeah, so, uh, Shukmar, you can send it. And let me share my screen. Yeah, so once uh, the lead uh, gives us a reply back to our, uh, our sent mail saying that I will attend. So here uh, we have used an uh, amazing feature from Salesforce which is known as uh, uh, Einstein Capture Activity. So what this Einstein Capture Activity does is it syncs our uh, Salesforce calendar with our Gmail calendar or with our Microsoft account calendar, which is, which we can connect either uh, based on our requirements. So what is the main objective of this is whenever there is any uh, event getting created or anything, uh, so automatically it will be reflected back onto the calendar, Google calendar, which we, uh, uh, of the particular account. So as we have created a, uh, event uh, so you can see that meeting with uh, shiva kumar uh, is so once uh, as shiva kumar has said that he would be give, uh, he will be attending it uh, the lead the representative who is going to work he will just go back to the um, meetings and then he just needs to add this uh, email address of the lead to the uh, respective meeting so once he adds and clicks on save, uh, here he would be asking, he will be sending the invite. And further, uh, the invite would be sent, uh, the meeting invite would be sent to the leads email. Based upon the meeting status or um, uh, based upon the conversations with the lead, if he is interested in uh, getting into another call or something, uh, so he will be. Uh, he can uh, reconnect or redo uh, based upon the status with the representative updates here. So here we have different uh, status. So based upon that, uh, he can uh, you know uh, schedule it, reschedule the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Over to you, Chatham. Thank you, Suhe. Now, once the evaluation team uh, gathers all the detail and uh, documents from dealer, it is going to be sent to managers for approval of that dealer. That we have captured in dealer approval process module, which is going to be explained by Aradna. Aradna, over to you. Thank you, Sinha. Can you please stop so that Shelly share the thing? Now, when the dealer submits the application, okay. when the dealer submits the application, it will come, uh, it will go into the approval process. 
when the approval process will be going to uh, sale uh, dealer manager he can either approve or reject based on his uh, decision so once he approves the lead record uh, that is the application here the dealer the application status will be changed to accepted after that it will get going to the lead conversion process and if uh, and if the dealer a manager rejects the application the application will be uh, status will change into closed not converted and the lead will not be processed further this is a uh, objective of approval process sorry for my uh, issue with the network sorry this one right shukma this d8056 right what's on only same yes yes Please bother with me, internet network. Sorry for that. Just uh, suddenly dropped it in this time. I'm not aware of why it is going like that. Sorry. So, when uh, the manual verification team so, uh, click approval pending uh, as a current status and then they will submit the record for approval. In this approval, they can give any uh, description. Then if the dealer manager approves the application, the next process that is uh, welcoming the dealer will be happening. Over to you, Sinha. Thank you. Thank you, Radha. So once the dealer has been approved and they are going to be converted, the moment the approval happens, the leader convert to contact and account, which has been done by Sarita. Over to you, Sarita. Thank you, Sarita. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for the joining. Yeah. In my, I'm working on the leader lead conversion. Once the approval manager approved the lead application, if it goes to the lead conversion, uh, like it's converted, if yes, uh, it's create the account and the contact record as well as uh, and the account, the lead status should be changed to closed converted. Stop sharing. I will share. Yeah. The approval manager approved the lead record is converted to account and as well as the contact record. Yeah, this is the account record, it's created automatically, and this is the contact record. Uh, this is created uh, automatically when lead conversion is happened. Uh, then the lead status, it should be changed to the closed converted. If uh, the approval manager is not approved, the status should be changed to closed, no, closed not converted. Thank you, Sinha. Over to you. Thank you, Sarita. Uh Shukma, please share the screen. 
So once a lead is converted in account and contact, there is a dealer welcome process that has been designed by me. They're going to receive an email. It is an automatic process. No human interaction is needed. Once they, they are converted in contact and account, they're going to receive a mail, mail which have all the details about what to expect and uh, what are the contact point in the MMC. So here we can see that upon the you know conversion of the dealer into contact and account, they got this particular mail immediately once it is converted and it talks about what they can expect, what MMC offers and where they can contact once they have, uh, you know, they have any kind of query, any kind of detail and all. That's all from the dealer welcome process. Now we are going to see once the dealer has been onboarded successfully, if he's looking for any kind of service, where he can go and how he can, he can avail the services from the uh, MMC. So this service module is, uh, let's switch to the, let's switch to the presentation, Shiv Kumar. Yeah, next slide talks about service management module where we will see the advanced feature that has been offered. Let's move to the next slide. We will see how the Einstein bot is going to uh, you know, help us in service, providing a nice service. Uh, and uh, we will see how they can create a, a fill a form for their need and talk directly to the you know, service team. So first we will see Einstein bot. Which is going, uh, which has been designed by Arathna. She's going to explain about it. Over to you, Arathna. Thank you, Simha. Okay, this is an Einstein bar that we have uh, used to uh, report our issue or uh, check the uh, dealer status. When I type hi, it will uh, show the options that what the bot can do. Here it is uh, asked whether to report an issue, whether to check the dealer application status or whether to check the reported issue status. Now in the report an issue, we can uh, report any issues uh, for uh, MM sales. They will store as a case record inside the uh, MM sales uh, organization. And the next one is dealer application status. When the potential dealer applies an application, uh, he or uh, she may wonder uh, what is what will be the status of the application and what will happen next and all. If they want to know that, they can uh, go on to the option like a dealer application status and see that in the reported issue status. In the first one, uh, we are reporting an issue, right? And uh, other case record which is getting created in, from the contact page of the website. Right? Those things will be stored inside a uh, case status. Where, with the reference of the case number, they can uh, know the uh, status from that they ensure that they are not boosted by the organization so now i'm giving them option one it will be asking for my name so here we can choose the categories categories are based on how the cases are man being managed uh, Based on the category, the case will be assigned to different queue. So it is crucial uh, part to create a category here, to mention a category here. Here I am giving the technical support. That is uh, number four. So it will ask us to describe the issue in brief. All right. It will ask for contact details. And after that, it will ask for an email ID. After that, it will give a case number in return. That is 1074. Uh, this one is a case number. Based on this case number, we can later check the status of our case. Now, uh, I am going for option two. Sorry for issues. Those issues are common when we are going with the uh, preview form.
this time, let us explore the, explore the second option. Here, it is, it is asking us to give a dealer reference number. I am giving uh, what we have seen. This, this is right, Shukma? Uh, Sima? This is the last thing. I see. Thank you. I think now uh, it is uh, telling right your, your case status is closed and converted. Your representatives will contact you soon. Now we will go and check with the third option, which is. Uh, Asking for a status number. Yeah. This is the case number for, for the last case, which I have created using the option number one just before. And it is showing that your case status is still new and our representatives will contact. Thank you. This is an objective of Einstein. Over to you, Sinha. Thank you, Radna. Now we will see the uh, another service management component, which is product inquiry. Let's see on the side. Over to you, Rashmita. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sima. So, yeah, so the overview of my product on the hiking. So, today, thank you, Ashwood Visit and Billy, for this great opportunity. So, my user story is to have a product inquiry form where user or a dealer can. Uh, Enter about the products, uh, it, it may be in details or specification, pricing, etc., with the MNC screen. So uh, I'll share the screen now. Yeah, so in our site, once we navigate through the products tab, we'll be able to see the product entry form here. So in product entry form, we have to basically fill some details which they ask. So after filling the basic details, here comes an uh, inquiry about free. So it will give a drop down of three pages where uh, it will be containing product information, pricing inquiry, and bulk order inquiry. So if the user selects product information and uh, uh, he can select uh, any product whichever he wants to get the specification of features and can give some additional comment and submit the form. So once if the form is submitted with the category, product information at the back end in the sales force, a case will be created with this uh, details. So with that case, if details, our service team will get back, uh, get back to the user and uh, fulfill their inquiries. Um, uh, so the, another option is like pricing inquiry and bulk order inquiry. Once the user selects pricing or bulk order inquiry, so another field will pop up where it asks for the quantity. So if they are want to um, purchase uh, some uh, purchase or they want to get a quote of some product, they can give quantity here. So for example, I can give some 15 or something and they can uh, give additional comments like need a quote on this pro product, etc. So once this form gets submitted, you will have a, a confirmation message. Also, at the back end in the sales post, both case and a related quote will be created. So let's uh, first see the case. Yeah, so you could able to see the uh, name that the Pinata and the dealer's company as BK dealer, etc. on the case detail. So now we can go to quotes. With this related quote, uh, sorry, with this uh, case, a related quote will also be created. Yes, we could find this Bopinath's quote for pressure box. So it will say that for which uh, product they have uh, actually inquired. So once the quote is created, automatically 
that fourth line item that is the product is also added to the fourth line item so here we could see the fourth line item detail like uh, pressure uh, pressure charge its sales price and how much quantity the dealer uh, or the user asked for and we can also have some subtitle if in case uh, the team or the mncs want to give some taxations or shipping handling they can also provide this here uh, for example i let me so we can save this so now the subtotal will uh, change total price will be changed now after relating it yeah we can create a photo uh, pdf so this pdf is a standard template which is inbuilt in the salesforce so here it will uh, display the product details price list and uh, what are the details we have extra added so for example tax and shipping etc and the grand total will be available so once we save this here in the code pdf we could able to see the code uh, code, uh, uh, code attachment also and also if we want to mail the dealer or the user we can have this here we can attach the particular code Okay, sorry, uh, since there are some limitations on the org which we have mail, uh, mail in a minute, uh, we couldn't able to send, but I can show you some example on this. Yeah, so this is the previous code which was created. Here, uh, they could also get the reference number for any future uh, need for the user or the dealer, and the code, uh, uh, code PDF is also attached to here. So as of now, this is the process we we could able to implement in this project. Our future scope is to uh, make this uh, also as an automated one. So thank you, team. That's it from my side. And over to you. Thank you, Rashmita. So once code has been created, now uh, Sarita is going to explain how the code automation will happen, and it is going to convert it order and contract. And then Bhona will explain if something goes wrong with the contact, how we can prevent deleting contact if they have active, you know, a quote and contract order list available. So over to you, Sarita. Thank you, Sinha. Uh, as discussed, my colleagues have created the quote. Uh, in quote, if the stock is available, uh, in quote, line item, we already added the products. If that product, if stock is available, and then it's automatically create the contract and order records if there is no stock availability uh, there is no contract record and the order record is not created and in our mmcl company also provides some discount is exceeded 10 percent uh, it's a uh, uh, manager will going to approve or uh, reject as per the criteria as per the company policies uh, if he approved the Quote, the discount amount is approved. Uh, if a manager is rejected the, the discount, the discount amount is rejected. So I will show in my okay. this quote is already created my colleague uh, here uh, there is no discount here in this quote so uh, I will provide the discount for this uh, product present gauge so here uh, I will give that discount 11 percentage once we save it and I'm going to submit for the approval once the manager is available uh, Uh, I will get the notification for this approval once I click this one. Uh, the manager, or uh, if manager is not available, some delegated officer also manage also approve. Uh, 
manager is approved or rejected based on the criteria of the company policies if uh, it's approved the status of this code changed to the approved uh, once we acted accepted this code the contract and the uh, order records are created if the stock is available uh, i will go to the contract yeah here is the 117 is created contract yeah if i change the status as activated here contract term even we are giving the contract term is manually why because the dealers over different uh, they choose the contract terms that's why it's uh, given manually so contract term is 3 once the activated this contract the order in the order here the order record is created when we quote accept once we quote accepted here we are uh, add the order product manually uh, some i i give some here uh, when is the product comes from the warehouse the payment and the dispatch status and delivery status should be the pending once i, I accepted uh, this order the payment dispatch and the delivery status should be changed to the uh, as per the equipment paid and dispatched and del delivered to the customer uh, this is the port management with the approval process uh, thank you sinha oh. Thank you, Sarita. Now, Bhuvaneshwar is going to talk about our account deletion prevention method. Yeah, thank you, Chetna. Can you stop sharing, uh, Shyoki? Actually, my user story is I cannot, uh, we should not delete an account. if it has an active order or a contract associated with it so here in this case here we have an active contact uh, contract and an order also associated here so what will happen if i try to delete this uh, 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 account it should not get deleted it should give me an error message i'll get an error message why because if suppose the account with the uh, active order or a contract status is deleted by uh, uh, by mistake by a sales rep or any other team member then uh, we will lose all the information about the customer that is the contract information will be lost contract is a tie up between the uh, dealer and also the account so if i try to delete this contract we will lose all the information about the customer or the dealer and uh, we will be facing some legal uh, consequences so we cannot delete this contract what happens if we delete an active uh, sorry active uh, uh, order the order contains the information about the products that that are to be provided to the customer so in this case the order will also as explained by my colleague uh, sarita earlier the order will contain the billing status uh, information also in it so if i if i am deleting this particular account the uh, uh, the information regarding the billing status and the dispatch status everything will be deleted and the, uh, and there is a possibility that the uh, the packing team or the package team they might deliver the wrong product to the customer so it will result in uh, customer dissatisfaction and also many teams are involved in the order so uh, it, we should not delete the account with an active order by mistake that's why we have uh, used this i have implemented this by using uh, apex trigger that's all from my side over to you chetna thank you bhuvaneshwari now once the code has been created and we have seen how a dealer can go ahead and create the cases regarding their need 
the case, the case management comes in the picture. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, we have divided the case management into four steps. One is when the case is created, half the case will be assigned. Then if the case is not being you know, uh, solved in a given time period, how we are going to escalation and how we are going to handle. If somebody has, a, if any contact has any entitlement purchase with the you know contract, how we are acting on those entitlements and then service support portal, how they can go ahead and raise again the query or talk about their thing. So let's look at the case assignment model, which is designed by me. Let's move to the next slide. Here we can see that case, whenever a case is being created, it is going to ask the category, what category they are choosing, depending on it is going to land in the queue. Like if the category is chosen, uh, sales, free sales, complain or account management, it is going to land in the high priority queue and it needs to be solved within two business days. If, if the category is chosen, users, refund and return and so on, it is going to be, you know, it is going to be a land in medium uh, assigned queue and then the rest of them are going to land in a low. Now, looking on the, the queue, the user assignment will happen with the omni channel. Omni channel will look available uh, agent at that point of time and then assign according to their skill set and capacity. Now let's go and have a demonstration. And uh, I'll share my screen. Thank you. So for the demonstration purpose, uh, we are pretending that uh, agent has logged in, the service agent has logged in and the case landed under the category, which is sales and free sales. Now, once the case has been created, it is going to notify available agent and it, he or she has to be, has to accept this within 20 to 30 seconds. If not, then it will go to the another. So here I'm accepting just for demonstration purpose and it is assigned now. So here we can see all the details like case updated, case updated, the email has been sent to the customer that we have created your case. Here we can check all the status. Right now we just created, so there is no status change. It has just assigned. Okay, so that's how we can see. And the, now the case owner is Chetna Sinha as I was a service agent logged in over here. Now I will keep the this particular demonstration very short. And let's move to the next slide where we will talk about the escalation. Please share the slide, Shukumar. Next slide, please. Yeah, so that is something about the case assignment. Now, what happens if in a given period, no user sign, maybe user has declined, there's a shortage of service or overflowing case is, it is going to the overflow queue and no user sign. So how it is going to react? This is talking about at that situation. If the high priority cases are uh, waiting in the queue for more than 200, two hour, 30 minutes, it is going to be escalated. It will land to the escalated queue. The same will happen with the medium after five hours, 30 seconds, and the low priority is six hours, 30 seconds. Then this is talking about the user assignment escalation. There is one more escalation. If the case is not resolved within given time period, like high priority cases needs to be resolved within two business days, medium needs to be resolved in the three business days and low priority cases are resolved, need to be resolved in five business days. If that is not happening, there is an escalation module, which is keeping a watch on that and it will notify the user that you do not have the timeline. You have to resolve it or get it escalated. If not happening, then it will escalate. It will change the uh, uh, status from a working or whatever the status is escalated. Now the supervisor will be notified and, and talk about uh, just uh, take care of it so that it will be, you know, solved or resolved within the time frame. Now let's move move to the next slide. Yeah, uh, here we are talking about the entitlement SLA. As I explained, if contact has any active entitlement, whatever the category they are choosing, it is going to ignore and every case will land into the high priority cases and treat it. Does not matter what category they have chose, it, it will be treated as a high priority and will be solved within two business days and escalation will happen according to the high priority cases. Let's move to the next slide. 
So we have seen so far how we are managing our solution and trying to give a automation, less human interaction, having less manpower for the maximizing output. Now, whenever there is a, some kind of process going on, we always have a chance of opportunity for improvement. So the survey helps in that way. I have designed a few surveys, which is going to, uh, to be emailed at, at each point of uh, contact, uh, uh, each point of contact by a dealer, right? <clears throat> if a dealer is buying product, the product satisfaction survey will be sent to him after purchase happened. Customer satisfaction survey will be sent to him when he is interacting with the service agents. Dealer onboarding satisfaction uh, will a service will be sent when the onboarding process finishes and he, he will receive it in the mail and talk about how did you feel about it or how we can improve. Support agent satisfaction will be sent once they have uh, their cases closed and once the Close stations happen, and they will receive in a mail. We do have a procedure for where there is no, you know, uh, feedback we are looking, but they they still have something to say. They can come back and give the suggestion. Now the distribution point of the survey is email and sites. So uh, one by one, I will go ahead and show you how we can do that. For the demonstration purpose, I'm only going to see to show you how we can collect the survey from the site. Now I will share my screen. Thank you. <laughs> Give me a moment. Okay, so this is the site which comes under a uh, contact us page. We have uh, seen it earlier explanation now this particular point it gives us to uh, give us uh, give us opportunity to hear something from dealer once they click on that this page will be landing and here it talks about how they are going to you know uh, how they are going to give us feedback and uh, how valuable is that now it it comprises with a set of questions it's taking some time yeah it comprises some set of questions where we are asking what kind of feedback they're going to give. They have to choose the product, uh, what product they have purchased. This is a product satisfaction survey. And they can talk about the, the questions which are marked with the red asterisk needs to be answered. Without that, we cannot finish the survey. And uh, these blogs are giving the opportunity if they have something to uh, share with us, but the questions are not covering. It does ask once the, the product satisfaction is done, are they interested in giving the customer satisfaction? Here, for the demonstration purpose, I'm choosing now. And that's how the survey finishes. Once the survey is finished, it is going to land in the survey tab in the Salesforce. I believe I, I see the, you guys can see the, the screen, my screen. If yes. it is not, yes. yes. Okay. So here I can, uh, as it says, so far 20 survey has been completed and it talks about how people are feeling about that. Like uh, out of 20 surveys, uh, seals and gasket are chosen as a product. And now uh, their, distrib uh, their responses were about mechanical seal all the time. And they were very satisfied we can see that 25% of the survey says that they are very satisfied, 25% they, they are saying that they're satisfied and 50% of the uh, survey says they are neutral. So there, definitely there is an opportunity of improvement. And then the, uh, uh, they're talking about uh, how would you rate the quality? The quality they find good, excellent. 50% uh, of the survey says excellent, 25% said good and few are saying average. So that's how we can analyze and we can, take a feedback from here and improve our service. That's all from my side. Now let's go to the slide. Yeah. Now, uh, once the survey is done, we're going to talk about here, our the solution mapping is done. Now we will talk about how the problem a problem statement and how the solution is going to match to each other and what are the added benefit we have given as a solution to the MMC. Let, next slide, please. Yeah. 
So this is going to talk about added value to benefit uh, to the uh, business, which will be explained by Aradna. Aradna, over to you. Thank you, Sumha. Actually, uh, as a part of a project, we have done a cost analysis, which is done uh, by a uh, uh, colleague, uh, Sarita. Uh, this, based on the cost analysis, we have analyzed that uh, what what will be the benefit will be given to the MMCs after this project. With this uh, project, we can uh, we are with this product we have we are giving to mm sales we can increase the overall efficiency by 40 percentage we are able to reduce the normal labor and uh, improved workflow with the help of the automation which is around 40 percentage in the application and it is minimized uh, the error by 80 percentage now with this automation implementation uh, where the same workforce can, ha can handle 150 percentage of the workload in an efficient efficient manner then they were handling prior to the implementation but the uh, this, uh, with this uh, onboarding stream and implementation, the customer experience is improved by 200% as they themselves will be involved in the process in a step-by-step -step manner, which makes them understand about the overall onboarding process, which gives an increase in the customer engagement, which in turn gives the higher customer experience. Customer support when the customer is having any issues, applicants, application status, regular update, etc. Another efficiency is that the traffic load will be reduced by uh, around uh, 60 percentage on the service agents as now uh, they will be placed in uh, skills where they have to face some um, complex scenarios like application form inbound and managing those applications from all means like email courier post calls the customer services managing the customers in a uh, different system before uh, for example the own old dealers are there in one system and the potential client are welcoming from another system and the new onboard dealers are uh, in the another system uh, now it is under the simple uh, one one uh, under the same roof as uh, one customer service portal uh, and they can also get a uh, call and uh, information and uh, timely update uh, from this uh, thing so this results in a reduced and uh, saving the operational cost which was estimated from our cost ben benefit analysis which is around two thousand dollars and uh, with this, with the categorization as uh, operational efficiency and reduced support cost, it significantly improves the efficiency and ensuring the error-free processes. And uh, finally, it is saving the cost to the organization. And now, future proof is it ensures scalability, security, and user friendliness. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Aranda. Now we are approaching to the end of the presentation. I request uh, audience if they have any question, they can start. Uh, Typing the chat, we will take one by one. Now we will move to the next slide, which uh, which is going to explain how we have developed this solution and uh, what are the features we have used. We have used apps, automation features, language and latest feature. This slide is going to be explained by Shiva Kumara. Shiva Kumara, please take over. Shivakumar, I think you're speaking on mute. I'm sorry. Oh, good evening. Sorry. Thank you, Sina. And we have used apps, sales cloud, service cloud, and digital experience cloud, also community portal, and automation cloud, trigger and workflow, approval process, escalation tools, SLA, SSO, email template builder, that is a new introduction. You can uh, design a email as per our requirement with the images, all these things that we have shown in that customer for uh, this one not even. When the lead is converted into account, we get the welcome email that is designed in email template builder. That is a new feature. And languages we have CSS, HTML, APEX, and LWC. And the latest features we have included in the dealer onboarding process with the Google address in the address bar. And the action button, the same screen, you can display the details. And the reactive screen also it is displayed. And we'll go to the next slide. And the document and process. Again, documents we are used to be a business required document, user stories, deployment checklist, technical document, and init text cases. And process we are using technical tracking, technical lessons, and communication channel. See, communication channel, it is the, it's, uh, plays a very important role. Will communication is mainly through email only, all the 
approvals and suppose we QA testing is done, we are shifting to one org, next org is done through email only. And other communication like we are using a click, daily meeting, scheduling meeting, everything is done in click. And we have used Agile methodology and we have team collaboration through use click and because we are using different, different time zones, somehow we are connected and we are able to do the project. Additionally, fixing of bugs and soft skill development. I'll show some of the documents. Here, one minute, I'll just show that one. This is the business BRD document for our project. This is the heading, all the details will be there, contents. And when it was approved by whom, document summary, all these things, it will be there. And This, this was that minutes, minutes of the meeting also recorded on a daily basis by me as an operation manager. What is the POC season four daily status meeting? Who are all attended? And what is the agenda notes? What are the actions? Next meeting, what is the time? It will be recorded on a daily basis. And this one is the login and logout details. When they are logged in and logged in detail, it is again, it is captured by the click to so whoever join in the morning, they'll put their message as connected or logged in. They'll put it in the click. I will capture the details and update in the Excel sheet. It is all available in the Google Drive. And this is the test cases we have designed for the, all the test cases. They use the Excel, Excel sheet to do the test cases, all these things. And after completing the each sprint, we'll have a tracking sheet what the lessons learned and we'll update the lessons learned. It has to be verification date and it will be reviewed by our uh, chief trainer, Mr. Vijit. We'll, we'll check the details, whether we are understanding all these things, it will get updated. And that's all from my side. One minute, we'll go to the next slide. And project management tools will be explained by Sarita. We are using Trello, also DevOps, and Zira by Suge. Over to Sarita. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Shokuma. Yeah, in the in our project uh, in sprint one, we are using the Trello. These are the Azale project management tools. Uh, in Azale project management tools, it breaks the projects into some small and uh, light the sprints. Uh, and it's Azale is the direct communication and uh, flexibility to change and quick delivery of the functional product components. And uh, in sprint one, we are using this uh, uh, Trello. Uh, this is the Trello board, uh, and uh, this is the board and uh, these are the list uh, we are creating product activities, user stories for development and staging and queue. These are the list. And uh, here we create the code also. Uh, once we add code, we are create the code here. And uh, uh, we can add members here easily when because this is a free trial. Uh, whenever we give the email address, its uh, members is automatically added to this project. And this is the budget friendly uh, Trello board and uh, like uh, 20 or 25 dollars so we will user will get the all access. Uh, these are the features. Uh, these are the code. Uh, this is the code based system for uh, managing product uh, offering a, a visible approach or to task and the project management. Uh, th these are uh, some key features is there uh, Kanban board and uh, labels and checklists uh, and due dates and some attachments. Uh, uh, this is the best for the simple uh, projects. 
project management needs and teams are looking for some straightforwarding and uh, visual tools. Some limitations is there. Uh, so here uh, uh, we are not adding some subtask to the task. Uh, and the, uh, in Trello, there is no any iteration process. Uh, and like one more, one more thing is the uh, we are depends on some third party integration here in Trello. Uh, and one more thing, we are not creating any reports uh, in Trello board. Uh, this is our, we are using in Trello board in Sprint 1. Uh, and uh, this is the Azure DevOps. Uh, in Sprint 3, we are using Azure DevOps. Uh, this is the one of the Azure project management tool. Here is, uh, this is developed by the Microsoft uh, design to support the entire software development lifecycle like SDLC. Uh, it uh, integrates with the with a variety of the like the development uh, and the testing and the deployment process to the streamline uh, project management and uh, it's enhanced the collaboration across the teams. Here some features or the boards and here we are creating some work items uh, uh, boards. This is our board uh, to do list and uh, staging and the QA. Some backlogs here. Uh, we can some backlogs more and sprints queries. Uh, in pipeline, we here create some pipelines. Uh, we can connect to Azure Repos Git and GitHub. Uh, some environments also we create the environments to. Here, uh, we can connect to the Kubernetes from the Azure DevOps. Some artifacts, artifacts is uh, one of the future here. Uh, we can connect to the .NET uh, through the Azure. Uh, some, some Python here, some environments we can connect it from the Azure. Uh, in Azure, we can create some reports and dashboards. Uh, we can see how the company growth uh, uh, based on the reports and the dashboards. Uh, this is the one of the future in uh, Azure. Uh, thank you, Shokuma. And uh, uh, Suhel, can you explain Zira? Suhel, so, so, so just hold on. Aradhan has to let Aradhan finish the new take over. Uh, thank you, Suhel. Uh, thank you, uh, can you please stop sharing with you? Oh. Due to some uh, emergency, I have to leave uh, before I, I will explain uh, dev about DevOps Center, which is a deployment tool we have used to deploy the metadata for the Sprint 2. And in a short, I will be explaining that. Uh, DevOps Center is a native uh, tool from Salesforce, which is a newly introduced tools by, uh, tool by Salesforce. The DevOps, and usually uh, the, uh, there are two types of uh, de uh, deployment, like uh, the deployments like chains that will happen like uh, 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 cha dragging and dra dropping it by clicking some buttons and uh, 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 metadata options and its dependencies we can deploy. And another uh, type of deployment tool is like a coding based deployment tool, like uh, Ant migration tool, uh, GitHub, etc. But uh, DevOps Center supports uh, both kind of deployment uh, tool. That is a, one of the main uh, uh, plus point and uh, one of the main positive uh, thing and uh, from the DevOps Center. Now, uh, from the DevOps Center, we are having the set of pipelines uh, when the were uh, initially when we uh, creating a work item, the work item it will be the new. And when the changes are uh, done in the work item, that is uh, work item uh, connected to the, uh, or connected to the work item. After that, uh, we once we uh, the changes are completed, we can uh, streamline the uh, metadata components in this uh, work item uh, entirely till uh, the last stage. That is either URTR protection based on the organization. In the middle, we can either bundle the work items into one. For example, if a project contains some 50 work items and, the, and uh, 50 user stories are being developed from the 50 scratch or sorry, 50 sandboxes, we can bundle it in a single stage and we can promote it uh, later. Not uh, in, uh, in other uh, tools, uh, we can we should select everything uh, manually from uh, one pipeline to another pipeline. But here we can streamline it entirely to the pipeline when uh, initially after move to staging and after validated. That is also one of the main positive uh, side of the DevOps. Thank you.
thank you. this is all the thing this is one complete work item which has been deployed from uh, scratch up to uh, uat with in the activity history we can uh, know the status that when the work item is created to when the change is completely promoted uh, to the last uh, stages of the and closed. thank you that's all for uh, the work for Thank the you. detailed presentation, you can uh, check uh, the presentations uh, which I have done on one Thursday. Yeah, we'll Thank move you. to next deployment. Thank you. Thank you. Sugail, is that Sugail? No, no, you can go to the mode and deployment tools. Yeah, okay. A copado and unmanaged package URL. I'll be explaining it now. I'll share my screen. So for uh, sprint three, I was a deploying deployment manager, and I've used uh, copado, and also we used uh, unmanaged package URL for deployment. In this case, uh, actually, for uh, un, uh, from staging, each uh, developer will be developing their component in their uh, own org, in their developer org, and uh, they will be providing us an unmanaged package URL, creating an unmanaged package URL, and they will be sending us the link. So with that link, we will be uh, installing, I have we have installed the packages to the staging org. So here, uh, for example, if you see here, the, uh, these are the components. We can view the components there. It will give the information what components are there in the installed package. So like this, we have moved to staging. And also, we have used a Copado for stay, moving from uh, staging to QA environment. And I have also moved some components from my arc to uh, staging arc using Copado. Copado is a native uh, DevOps tool, which is Salesforce DevOps tool, which is available in the app exchange for free. So we can go there and uh, we can download, uh, we can get the free version for 15 days. We can use it uh, 15 to 30 days. We can use it and I uh, have used the essentials plus version to uh, to deploy the components from a staging arc to the QA arc. So the advantage with the uh, Copado is we can add uh, as many uh, components we need. It doesn't need to be a single user story. We can add many uh, components to the same deployment package. But here, uh, the example where I'm showing us is this related to a single user story uh, dealer application process. And we have deployed it from staging to QAR. This is a big advantage here. And then it will, uh, first we will have to, it, it has a static uh, run code, an, run static code analysis. It's nothing but a testing thing, which is available in Copado. So it will test your components and then we have to validate it. When validating, uh, it will uh, provide uh, errors. If, if uh, your component uh, has some errors, it will provide the validation error here. So actually uh, the Copado, uh, main advantage of Copado is when you are going to deploy from uh, Apex, uh, some Apex classes, we will be writing Apex test classes also. So actually, even if our code coverage is 100%, I wrote an Apex test class. My code coverage was 100%. It gave me some uh, uh, more detailed information that I can uh, change, modify my code like this. So those all are uh, very uh, useful when we are using uh, Copado for deployment. And then we can deploy. This is a package uh, that we have deployed and it has uh, succeeded uh, successful here. So we have deployed it on the date. Actually, it will be there in our org for uh, nearly one year, I think. It will be there stored so we can go check our org. And also, uh, one more thing is we can uh, use work item with uh, pipelines and also we can uh, directly use CA jobs also for deployment. So this is this has been explained in detail uh, by me in, uh, in a Thursday presentation. It will be posted on YouTube shortly. You can go through that. And the the limitation with Copado is uh, we cannot actually, we can make only 15 deployments at a time. And uh, so because of that limitation, we have to move either to deployment using a DevOps center or by using a gear set. Uh, that's all from my side. And uh, over to you, uh, Sinha. Thank you. 
Thank you, Pona. So uh, we are done with the demonstration of Copado and the next de demonstration is going to be done by Rashmita for Gearset. Rashmita, over to you. Yeah, that was the same thing. I'll share the screen. Yeah, hi, team. So uh, as, uh, as my colleagues uh, explained, like we deployed using DevOps Center and managed packages on Copado. We also used the gear set to deploy the components from one hour to another hour. So this is the deploy uh, gear set deployment environment. Here in the Salesforce ops, we could uh, add the ops, whichever we want to work or whichever we want to move the components from and to. Uh, so once the org is connected, here we can come. We lost your sorry, voice, Rashmita. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So here in the comparison section, here we could add, add the source org, and here we could add the target org. So for example, if you are uh, moving from QA to uh, UAT, so here we can compare now and we can move to the deployment um, component thing. So here we can uh, select uh, whatever the components we need to uh, deploy or uh, uh, we need to move from our, uh, our one or to another. So, for example, I'm just uh, clicking this. So, once it is selected, it will have a pre-deployment summary, which gives us whether uh, there are any uh, fixes to be suggested. So, once it is once it is done, here in the gear set, we will have the options like both deploy now and validate deployment. So the advantage is like we can validate the deployment before it is being deployed into the org. So it is here like uh, no difference because these uh, ob uh, these object of these are already in the uh, target org. So I can show you some successful uh, deployments in the deployment history. So these are the components uh, we have moved from uh, uh, every org or from staging to QA, 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 QA etc. So once we click the view details, we could able to see the uh, detailed view of the deployment history. So yes, here I have deployed three metadata items like Apex trigger class, Apex classes. So uh, it is from QA to UAT. So this is it with the gear set. Uh, uh, according to the previous explanations, yes, the advantages of gear set is like a we could able to track the history. We could able to also validate the components before the deployment, um, preventing us from getting any errors or hits. So uh, this uh, gear set we used almost in our every sprint, uh, like sprint one, two, three, and four. That's it. Now. Thank you, team. That's it. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Rashmita. So we have moved to the end of the presentation. Now, in conclusion, let's move to the next slide. Yeah, so this is our team. Shokumar will explain uh, this uh, particular slide for us. Thank you. I think Shokumar, you're speaking on mute. Sorry, this is our team. Um, our team, my name is Shivok Kumar. I'm from Trichy. I'll work from 9.30 to evening, 5 o'clock. Bhone Ferry from Chennai. Aradhana from Salem. Sarita from Hyderabad. Vishnita from Chennai. And we have two youth clients. Sinha from US and Deepika from UK. Kavita Sundarve from US and Sugail from Hyderabad. Some are all in different, different work time, different, different work the culture. Some of we are using... Uh, communicate through click with the details and we give the details through email, what are the user stories to be obtained. With any clarification, we'll contact among ourselves and we'll try to complete the project without any with little hiccups and uh, bottlenecks of that, but somehow we are able to complete our project. And 
And future scope of the project is you can put the AI powered guidance, iterative updates, interactive training also we can do process, progress tracking that also we can do it as a future scope of the project. And we thank you, Mr. Ashok Raj, CEO AJST, Mr. Nagarajan, technical advisor, our Vijit Raj, project coordinator, everybody knows. Sendil, our project coordinator for Sauna Squad and AJST support team for providing all the details, all the uh, meeting invitations to all, everybody and our Sauna Squad team also and our trainers. That is very, very important because with the trainers only we get the guidance from the details, how we have learned the subject, all these things and our team members. Thank you. Thank you all for all the cooperation, all the... Thank you, Shiva Kumari. Shiva, can you, can you highlight the yeah. challenges you faced? Uh, um, yeah. I mean, regarding what, what you learned. Right. The challenges the mainly from needs. my side. Yeah. See, we are all team members are new to the project. See, I have designed some, some uh, projects in my organization. I was a retired person from Air India. So I am the user, I am the developer. So then they will not, they will not create any BRD. Agile methodology, all these things, I have, I have no idea about it. After the joining the project only, there's a lot of things to be learned. See, when we are learning the class, we are having some uh, specific case studies. Suppose this one, A is not coming, we'll try to put B, we'll try to get the uh, uh, reference from the, sorry, from the, what do you say, from the trainer. Okay, this is not coming. Okay, you do this way, you do that way. No. But when you're going for a project, the requirement is specific. You cannot deviate the requirement. You have to, somehow you have to uh, stick on to the requirement. You cannot deviate. So that type of learning and all, you can do it in the project only. And it is a teamwork. It is not an individual performance. So uh, Mr. Ashok will give the uh, update and that same will communicate through widget which it will communicate us, we will discuss among us, among ourselves, we will give the user stories, and we will again, we will work it on individually, whether it is working fine or not. But that final product, that uh, that condition has to be satisfied. You should not deviate the condition. This was I learned, I learned a lot of things as a, in, in the project. Uh, it is a very good project and very useful for me. Thank you. Thank you, Shiv Kumar. Let's move to the next slide. We have a couple of so questions. Have... Uh, like uh, someone asked uh, about uh, Apex. Yeah, uh, Vijay. Yeah, someone asked about Apex in the dealer creation. I, I think uh, we don't use Apex for dealer creation. Our Apex is only uh, used with Bona. No, Apex. Can you explain, uh, uh, Bona, where you use Apex code? Yeah, yes, Vijit. Actually, I used uh, PEX code for uh, account deletion to prevent the account deletion. So, there I used uh, okay. PEX code. Yeah. And, so, uh, you written the test it, cases, everything, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Test class. Yeah. It's a trigger, actually. So, I have written uh, an account trigger handler for that. I used uh, before delete for that. And I've written the test, cla one test more class. Question. Yeah, thank you. One more question about escalation management. What are the best practices? Oh, I'm sorry to bother here. I have to leave. I have other commitments, so it's already very late for me. Thank you. Okay, no problem. No problem. No, thank you for that. Ashok, over to you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Hey, hello everyone. Please let me know if I'm audible and visible. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, visible, visible. Yeah, okay, visible. Okay. <laughs> Happy to see you guys, uh, especially today, uh, the day which you have been uh, waited for so long, the final day of your uh, two months of journey. Such a, a nice thing to see, uh, as Shiva Kumar told. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I think, uh, Shiva, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself, uh, Shiva, uh, right from the beginning? Uh, maybe uh, uh, 
from where you are how did you land up in uh, salesforce and what you are currently doing happy to see you here right thank you sir i am a 56 year old young man retired from air india <laughs> okay yeah go ahead go ahead bsc graduate i am bsc graduate a bsc mathematics graduate i learned dbs from the starting dbs 3 4 then fox space fox pro and i learned sap also that oracle also sap also i learned some more i like that database programming then i joined indian airlines in 1992 as a security guard and 98 became as a traffic assistant posted in bangalore worked for 10 years then again back to trichy then promoted then transfer to vijayawada final stages so at that time tata taken over by air india so vrs afternoon came they applied vrs i came back to chennai in the meantime my brother in law said why can't you learn sales force and all i asked him sales say whether you require a big computer setup or you need a server all these things so he said nothing required all cloud based computing and again or whether it is a database involved in that or not because i like to do the database programming and so then finally he said you could try with the agst then i contacted you personally on the day then one week i had attended the training then joined so i had to spend the time as well as i had learned new things also because i learned i had done lot of programs in fox pro now also if you ask me to do a program in fox pro i can able to do it without any difficulty and in excel sheets also using macros all these things all database programming only pp also i learned this is a one good opportunity and suddenly that project came and immediately i applied we'll try <laughs> with that one and all the new things on all learned because i don't know that agile technology all these things and all i have no idea about that is no idea thank you thank you thank, thank you, you for giving for the you. opportunity and uh, <laughs> yes uh, being here uh, from a uh, graduate from the bsc mathematics and uh, uh, maybe i i cannot uh, call that age but age is just a number when i saw when i seeing you age is just a number uh, you have been uh, gone through the so many areas now at this age at this uh, you got retired and now you are learning salesforce right you are so your kind of a thing uh, inspiration to all the youngsters over here including myself that uh, learning is there is no end for learning even at any age or any moment or any time we can learn you are not only stopped only with uh, learning from the videos or learning from the case studies you have come this far you completed all the case studies and uh, in fact you have been supporting us as assistant trainer now you have been part of the team and uh, completed two months of projects hats off <laughs> Thank, thank you so you, much you. for being with us and uh, you are giving us the, all the motivation the way uh, the i still remember the day we spoke uh, in age skill development chennai office you got the same energy even till today thank you so much <laughs> for thank being you, inspiration to all of us thank you thank you now coming back to the team guys it was absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant because when it comes to poc as shivakumar told in between it is not at all something uh, which is already available in the video or not something uh, someone is, has already done you are the one encountering each and everything for the first time copado first time <laughs> deployment manager first time trello first time brd first time agile first time right how many first time you have been facing so far in the last two months that is amazing see these two months not only telling you that uh, you are capable of creating a project these two months it's telling each and every one who have been part of this project that you can do anything if something has been done already someone has done you can also do it it's a matter of consistency and at the end two months how many people are joined in the first and how many still with you till at the last how many efforts you have put in a consistent way i know uh, since i have been a part of the click i know how many chats going on and how many meetings being organized every day not only for the demo purpose you guys have been uh, supporting each other as a team work you have been doing all these thing brilliantly if you guys able to do this thing this two months you are able to do this in a consistent way you can do anything whichever comes in your way thanks for being an inspiration the each and every team members 
you guys are giving us a hope that this program POC can be continued in all the years with all your support because every whenever every team come here and they are able to nurture like this and at the end of the day we are seeing a, such a brilliant project great thank you so much uh, for you Vijay right from the day one and this is the second season for you when compared to the first season the second one is elevated in uh, VAR level <laughs> and this time we have been uh, handling with two teams right uh, thanks to Sandil the other team uh, coordinator and to you who not only coordinate the team you have to make sure each and every team members, both in Milestone Makers as well as in Sauna Squad, should have got the good understanding about all those terms. But we are using the tracker sheet to track the thing, right? Whether they got understanding on Experience Cloud, whether they got a understanding on the Agile. Thank you so much for all your uh, days and nights, all the meetings, because I know when we start meeting by 8.30, every day it's, it takes time to con conclude, right? Because we have to support the counterparts in UK and USA. I really appreciate each and every one for your coordination, right? Forget about the technical part. You have explored a lot, even part of the training program. But apart from the technical, what you guys learned so far as a process you're supposed to follow, as a documentation you're supposed to follow, there are n number of tools there that we you got explored. So now you know how to explore the thing. And now you know how to solve the problems. Any problem comes in your way, even after you got placed in any organization. Obviously, uh, they will throw a lot of problems in front of you. You got the courage and uh, guts to face it. Okay, come, whatever the project you give. It's a matter of time for me. I'm able to do this in a consistent way and I can also do this. I'm happy that uh, you guys are able to use this, utilize this platform effectively that I can say that uh, all these terms, which and all we have given you as a guidance, because nothing has been uh, put uh, like a uh, spoon feeding. Each and everything you guys explored and you come up, you did all the trial, error, trial, error. So, something uh, brilliant. Okay, I'm very happy. End of the day, uh, as a coordinator, one of the coordinator of this program, this day actually gives me a, a lot of hope as well as uh, I will go happily for the sleep. <laughs> Thank you so much. Over to the team members. If you have anything to share, uh, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok, for giving Thank me this opportunity. For giving us all this opportunity. And it was uh, a good experience, actually. Actually, we learned only uh, through case studies, like Shivakumar said, right? This is completely new for us. Deployment and uh, team collaboration is main thing that we learned here. So how to integrate the components was there. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I will do my part. I don't know how to co how to integrate with the other person's component also. There are so many feedbacks from our team members also. So we all took everything into account and uh, we have done this project. We would like to thank our uh, trainer, uh, coordinator, Vijit. He's always uh, he has always supported us in all uh, on our, yeah. throughout our project. Yeah, thanks, Ashok. Thank you, thank you. And team, yeah, you will be getting feedback form from the team. Uh, of course, uh, even though I, uh, we have been doing these things really good, that might be a area of improvements for us uh, when we go from POC four to five. So when you receive such form. Take your time, no rush. Just fill whatever you feel in front of in uh, in your mind. Even if you feel that uh, this can be improved, this can be added up. Feel free to add it. Don't think that uh, what if I give this as a input? If they think bad of me, no, nobody is going to think anything of, about that. Be genuine in giving that feedback, whether it is good or not. It can be improved because we are looking forward to improve this program effectively so that someone who comes in POC five or six they will get benefit out of uh, the feedback which you are going to give. Thank you. O over to others. If anybody want to share anything, hey, uh, go ahead. Hey, uh, this, this is Birapa. I want to say a few words about uh, Shiva Kumar, and the 56 years <laughs> young guy. Uh, actually, uh, Shiva Kumar, I, I had up to you and your energy uh, that you are showcasing and this is really uh, Thank you. fantastic. Uh, 
um we have uh, read stories in the newspaper we have uh, heard stories about uh, people who started uh, after 55 after 60 but uh, even i completed my graduation at the age of 30 so yeah i will uh, always remind myself uh, that i know a person uh, who has a uh, whose age is 56 and he still wanted to learn and i will also definitely teach this to my children as well thank you for being here thank you for being here and uh, all the best and all the best team good good thank you, good thank you birappa thank you thank you okay is there anyone over here who is not part of the poc scheme uh, you want to ask any questions to the team about the projects or salesforce feel free to ask this is a good platform you got uh, great uh, participants over here if someone who is completely new to even ajst or salesforce feel free to ask your questions if you have any to the team there is a question from ravinder he wants to know how to be part of team like mm and S sauna squad is interested to join our team okay ravinder kaur hi ravinder kaur uh, poc proof of concept is a initiative from ag skill development along with the digicas india private limited so we are conducting this as a season uh, poc 1 2 3 now we are in the season 4 it, it is a two months program uh, apart from the training we are conducting this exclusively for the projects maybe the poc 5 season will kick start in the september month the first week if you are interested you will get the notification in the Uh, whatsapp group which you are part of ajsk and you will get a email notification by the time you can enroll it's not about uh, uh, teams there will be a team will be created and you you can become the part but if you want to be uh, become the part of the existing teams like uh, sauna squad and uh, mm sales right we are using a internal messaging applications called zogo click we can add you in that applications and we can also give a introduction to the team members if you are going to do any projects if you want to get in touch with the team members you can you can uh, make use of their application and the click application have we this uh, showed uh, that uh, vijeta our click applications and all yes maybe uh, shiva can you share one more time yeah uh, sir before that uh, i want to thank our uh, deepika and uh, avita especially deepika she has helped me a lot i'll design one uh, uh, so in this one i'll show deepika whether it is working fine from any because i am as a user i cannot design in a proper way end user only can able to decide what is to be done but she is a, for her personal comment she is unable to complete uh, till the end of the poc session a special thanks to deepika and kavita We have only designed the initial uh, uh, web uh, that is called uh, experience flow done. Okay, good, 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 good. Well done. Well, good job, guys. Good. Which is you said something, right? Yeah, you want, we want to see the click application. How we are using? Okay. So click Zogo click is our internal application we use to collaborate like this to talk to each other to conduct meetings. right so if if you are part of ag skill development you also want to become uh, want to do projects along with the team members you want to get in touch with those team members uh, you have my number please ping me in private i will add you here this is uh, exclusively only for ag skill development uh, trainees who wants to work on the projects if you are being part of this one but you are not making any progress in the projects or not at all uh, doing any project since we are having limited uh, uh, slots right we have to remove you from that so it is strictly for the people who are really interested in doing the project and doing the project this application it's a internal application where you can schedule a call discuss with your team chat please use it effectively thank you shiva thank you and yeah, thank regarding uh, chetna the way that you have hosted this uh, uh, demo right not only here the previous demo this is something fantastic uh, chetna the way you moderator is really good Uh, you re you really got that one. You proved like a, you are a pro in this one. Good work, good job, Chetna. Since she is not there, I think she has left. Sinha, maybe. Chetna, Sinha. Maybe she is on mute. Okay. 
anybody have any other questions? Uh -huh. Okay, guys, uh, before we wind up, uh, if anybody wants to be part of a uh, project, if you see, I, I don't want to wait till the POC 5 and all, uh, but I want to do the project. So could you please help me to in get introduced with the team? Because again, the team members are still going to use the channels and as a team, uh, this is for the team, uh, Sauna Squad and Milestone Makers. Guys, you've got a good team. Uh, make sure the project which you have developed as a team, uh, each and everyone in the team members got the complete knowledge in and out about what and all we have used, developed, whether the documentation and all. Make sure the team members got the knowledge transition on the same. Because uh, when the individual is going to appear for an interview, if they talk about this project, they must have the idea of all those things. What tunnel we have used, they must have the idea. If you think you are having a gap in the understanding, because as a teamwork, when we are delivering, there are chances. You didn't get an opportunity to work on the one particular component or documentations. Better get in touch with the team. You are still going to be part of the so-called uh, click channels and all. Make use of it. Okay. So when it comes to interview, uh, for God's sake, please prepare your resume in such a way that you are projecting this project like anything, because you have done two months of effort. One full page, you can talk about this project. What are the document you have done? What are the process with Agile methodology, Trello? Put each and everything in the resume. And when the interviewer will see the resume, they will start to ask about the project. And you will also talk about the project. They will get impressed and they will definitely give the opportunity. Because out there, uh, nowadays Salesforce, anybody can learn Salesforce by using uh, Salesforce uh, channels, trial head and all. The moment uh, as a recruiter, if I start look for opportunity, uh, people looking for Salesforce job, thousands and two thousands of people applying for one opportunity. Because they think that by learning from YouTubes or learning from trial head alone would be enough. As a recruiter, I, I find it difficult to filter the resume. Nowadays, the res recruiter started filtering the resume with the help of AI, provided the resume having the project information. Rather than I know this, I know that, I know that. In your resume, if you are having projects, you have done a project or you have done an internship, the AI is going to filter that for the re recruiters. Out of 10,000, out of 1,000 and 2,000, you are going to be picked like a one guy. So ensure that your Salesforce project details is in your resume and please create a portfolio for your uh, uh, for yourself since you are already created an experience cloud you can create a, your own portfolio in the experience cloud and you can project about yourself you can find a video uh, that is a, our AJST trainee named Pavitra Chandrasegar recently has demonstrated how to create a Salesforce portfolio for us just like a resume okay so this is a very good opportunity I'm happy for the both teams so the ultimate goal is, I, I wish all the team members who participated in this project has put that in your resume and you applied for opportunity and got placed. We are waiting for the day uh, when you are going to come back and tell us, Ashok, I got placed in this so -so organization and waiting for to host you uh, in one of the webinars to uh, showcase that this so-and-so has done a project and got a good opportunity. Please share your uh, uh, experience. Waiting for the day. All the very best, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. Thank from you. my side, anything from you, from the team? Yeah. yeah, thank you, Ashok. Once again, thank you, Sandil and the AJST team, and especially to the support team for uh, helping us on the, all the backend activities. And special appreciation to our trainees. I mean, they have transferred themselves into interns and seized this wonderful opportunity to learn, grow, and contribute in this meaningful project. And we've seen many success in the earlier POC team, and I'm sure each and everyone in this team also will be blessed with a good opportunity soon. Thank you, team, and thank you, this team. All the best. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, thank you, Vijay. If you are interested to learn Salesforce, visit AJ Skill Development website. There you can find our course curriculum and you can come to know about the list of courses we are offering. We are offering Salesforce Administrator and Salesforce development courses. 
to know about us and the team, you can visit our About Us section. This is an organization we are doing at Salesforce training from 2018, and we have trained out and guided 2,000 plus candidates so far. And if you also want to know about our placement assistance, visit our placement assistance section where you can find the list of people and the category. You can see the list of people who got uh, trained and placed from our site. You can also visit their LinkedIn pages to get to know about our training and also the feedback from the relevant trainees, okay? And also, if you want to do the course inquiry, click on contact us, you will see the form. You can fill the form and submit the inquiry. Our team will get back to us. Thank you.